Hello, I'm Michael Glass from MichaelGlass.com, where we focus on making informed decisions about your financial future. This is our Forex Technical Analysis Trading Plan for Sunday, June 26, 2011. In our video, we're going to cover a couple things, but first we have to go over our disclosure. Any symbols you see today should not be inferred as a trading recommendation, no matter what form of investing you choose, stock, forex, futures, options. They all have a level of risk associated with them. You can't lose all of your money. Any strategy we show today are for informational purposes only. Future results are not guaranteed. And any investment decision you make is on your own responsibility. Trade at your own risk. So as I said, this is our weekend technical knowledge wrap, wrap up for June 26. We're going to look at the past week's price action and come up with some key support and resistance price levels. We'll look at the gold and crude oil charts to see if there's any leading sentiment there. We'll come up with a low volatility watch list. And inside of our watch list, and we'll review the economic calendar to see if the, what could affect our open and potential trades. And finally, we'll have an education spotlight at the end. With that, let's go to the charts. Okay, we're starting off as we look at the dollar uh, currency period. We're starting off with the dollar Canadian. We can see the long-term downtrend line. We can see short-term uh, uptrend. And one thing to note is that we finally closed above 98.15. We had some wicks, but we finally closed about it. So our ascending wedge is now resolving to the upside. So in uh, some of our other pairs, we talked about these wedges. And this is what we mean when we say it needs to resolve itself. Um, you, you buy uh, support, you sell resistance until it finally breaks out. Um, now maybe the 200 moving average will act as uh, resistance. We had a couple of wicks here. Um, we're actually above. Here's You can see this support. Uh, that was here and we're, we close above that so it's going to be interesting we're in a tight you can see this just wicks all over the place here and that's what we're entering um, and we're getting a close to our uh, Bolger bands uh, overbought level here so you know we may actually have an aggressive short here especially at the 200 moving average now on the dollar franc we're hoping to see maybe some similar action like we saw in the uh, euro franc Here's our downtrend line, uh, the 20 and the 50 acting as resistance. Here's our support level. So we want to see if this is going to break out. But of course, just like before, this is an oversold uh, level. But we'll see if the dollar franc can follow through like the euro franc and break sharply to the downside. Finally, for our dollar pairs, we have the dollar yen. And here we have a descending wedge. A little bit easier to see here. Our resistance, our support, needs to resolve itself one way or the other. Uh, since it's a decent wedge, probably to the downside. Um, let me just scroll back out one more time. Just, I mean, you can see it's been chopping um, all the way from January. So you can't, you actually, you might just think that this is just going to work its way back up because it's just been in this tight consolidation range. And all we have here is that's the Japanese earthquake reaction and we bro broke out and now we're right back into that range okay we are starting off with the euro so we have the euro Aussie and you can see long term we're in a downtrend here short term we do have an uptrend that we can watch here as a matter of fact let's go ahead and draw in that short term uptrend line here there we go but uh, as we zoom in, you can kind of see two important things. It does look like the 200 moving average is holding up as resistance, and we're coming into uh, uh, some choppiness. Uh, what we can see also is that a previous support level was our bounce point. So now, as we come back, as we the 200 acts as resistance, will we bounce here again? Will we bounce on this uptrend line? Those are the two things I'm watching for. Maybe we'll get a, a, a break out of this above the 200 or below this uptrend line. Either way, right now, I'm going to pass. Uh, next, we have the Euro-Canadian. Here we can kind of see an ascending wedge. Here's our uptrend line. We'll draw it out just a little bit here. And then there's our resistance. We also have the 500 moving average. We don't talk about that often. And there's a... Uh, you could argue that there's a resistance line here at 1.399. Uh, you could certainly say that. Uh, but for, since we wicked out of there before, I'm going to really just talk about the 500. So what we have here is 
a bounce point and, and you can kind of see that we, we missed that initial bounce and so we can wait for a pullback to see if we can catch another bounce off this uptrend line or we can wait for again just like the previous one this is an ascending wedge so it's, it's going to resolve itself down or up once we get to the center uh, what about the euro franc which has been tanking Here we can see the break. You could we had a decent wedge here. Take our downtrend line, extend it on out, and we the 20 moving average was acting as resistance, and then eventually it fell out. So at this point, you know you certainly you have an aggressive buy right now. Um, it certainly is oversold, um, uh, and, and we need to get back towards the 20 moving average. What about the euro pound? Here, uh, we're kind of in a little choppiness, but we also have a double inside bar here, inside bar, inside bar. So maybe this means we're either going to break down and, and complete this in pattern. The problem with that is that we're in the buy side of our Bollinger Bands. Um, or we could break up higher to retest uh, the last swing high. Um, and on hourly, we did have a little buy in here. So, um, you know, I'm going to sit my hands on this one also. Maybe the 20 and the 50 will act as support. There's a lot of choppiness, and I'm, I'm looking for something like the euro franc that is clean that we can trade. We have the euro yen, which is also in a descending wedge. It's a little bit easier to see here. We've got our support at about 113.84. We've got the 200 moving average there. Here's our downtrend line. So, again, this has to resolve itself one or the other. We could be breaking out to the downside, or we could have that reversion trade. And finally, we have the euro dollar, which, longer term, um, you can see sort of have an M going on here. Also, if I, for those interested, if you scroll out monthly and even longer, uh, uh, you can kind of see our double top here that um, we can see very nice. Long term, we're in a trend. This is where we failed last time. Uh, let's go back to our daily. So uh, I would be leaning more down than up. We broke the 50 moving average. We're breaking the uptrend line. Um, so I would be looking for this one to go down. But while it's in the middle of this range here, I want to see it break it lower or, again, break to the upside. As we switch to the pound currency pairs, we start off with the pound uh, Canadian. And, you know, really all I have to do is say, look at this, and you can see the choppiness and who wants to trade that. Um, next, we have the pound franc. And like the euro franc, the pound franc has already made its move lower, so that's why we're hoping that the dollar franc will do the same. At this point, we'll have to try to find a reversion trade to move back to the 20 moving average. Uh, we have the pound yen. Here we had a descending wedge. We also have an uptrend, but notice the last three days we did break the uptrend line, so this is probably going to be moving lower. Um, uh, we're in a clear downtrend. You could probably draw a tra channel here, a bottom to the channel. So this one's heading lower, but it's already moved without us, so we'll have to wait for another entry. And finally, we have the pound dollar. Starting show weakness, uh, closing below the 200 moving average, set an inside bar here, starting to close below this last support level, which would take us down to about 1.58 if it breaks. So there's definitely some weakness here with an inside bar at support. We'll have to see uh, which way this goes. There is a trade to the upside and a trade to the downside either way. Our last two pairs we're going to look at is the Aussie dollar and the New Zealand dollar. You can see the Aussie dollar starting to show some weakness, breaking some key price levels, breaking the 50 moving average, uh, breaking this support level. You could argue that there's another support level here at 1.49. And we're getting ready to break that. If we break here, uh, we're probably going down to one, 
0 0.041 uh, before we, we test uh, to uh, to bounce up. Uh, but it, note though, at this price level at 1.49, that the buyers have found value. We're sort of in a range, and so we easily could reverse back up. Finally, the New Zealand dollar, which is the strongest pair, we can see um, nice uptrend, bounce off the 50 million average, where everything else is failing at 50. This one's bouncing. A little downtrend line that we could draw here, aggressive downtrend. Uh, definitely could see some more move to the upside where the rest of the market is showing weakness. Okay, right now we currently do not have anything set up for our winter band low volatility setup. We do have a couple for our inside bar watch list. We're watching the euro dollar and we're watching the pound dollar. So as we move to our education spotlight, we're talking about patience. You see, uh, we've been talking about what separates positive, consistent, profitable traders and losing traders. And, you know, the last uh, time we talked about working as hard when the market is closed as it is when it's open. Well, the other thing is patience. Yes, you need to be working, but you also need to be working on your patience. And uh, in our cartoon here, it says, I don't care what the timer says, my nose says they're done. Well, patience is not the ability to wait, but it's the ability to stay positive while waiting. And what I'm trying to convey here in the cartoon and in the quote is that people trade to trade sometimes. They don't wait for their setup. They don't wait for uh, things to fall into place. They anticipate. Uh, that could be because of their fear, fear of missing out. Uh, sometimes it's self-sabotage. Whatever it may be, people are not patient. Um, they test the system. Um, and, 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 and then there's also those people who do follow the system, but after the first loss, they, they quit. You have to be patient and let the system work for you. That is if you have a defined system, of course. So, um, you know, another thing that se separates our winning traders and losing traders is patience. That discipline to be focused, that discipline to be patient and wait for your setup. And then not only wait for your setup, but after you start taking the setup, the patience to let the system work over a period of time. As you know, you can find our videos on YouTube, Twitter, uh, Facebook. We have a page on Facebook called Are You Financially Illiterate? So you can check that out. We have our free five-part video course on high probability trading. If you're going to trade Forex, even stocks or options, this will be perfect for you. We also have a cash back relationship. If you're going to be trading Forex, you might as well get paid whether you win or lose. It doesn't change your spread, doesn't change your conditions. It's just paying you to trade. We also have a Forex single so uh, software for you that helps predict eight hours trends. And we have automated trading also available for you. Now, uh, keep in mind that all these things are good, uh, especially our free video course there. But we firmly believe that you have to have coaching. So certainly go to our site at michaelglass.com and check on our coaching to see how we can help you one-on-one -on -one develop a personalized trading plan to make you a successful, successful trader. With that, guys, I'll see you next time.